Hey, welcome to Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. It's Monday, July 22nd, 2013. Uh, coming at you live on Twitch.tv slash HorribleNight. I am your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me this evening, Cole Monroe. Hey, everybody. What's up, I like buddy? I be more excited when I say hello, because it's a real show. I think your hands are more excited than your voice. My hands are always more excited than my voice. <laughs> uh, this I just is, can't get past my monotone. <laughs> it's it, it's it's just stay in character. You're fine. Your fans <laughs> your fans appreciate you for who you are. My fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're uh, this is an interactive podcast. We're here tonight to uh, get caught up on the weekend gaming, your best and worst of the week, and your, your game of the week. But before that, uh, Cole, what's been going on? You had a rough weekend, I heard. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be it'll be good to talk about this, but this isn't exactly the most positive thing you're gonna hear on the internet today, um, like a royal baby. <laughs> but um, so my dog got attacked by a pit bull on Friday, and um, it really sucked. Like committing violence on a dog to get another to <laughs> so it could release my dog was not something I ever wanted to do. Yeah, uh, but it was something that needed to be done. Um, my dog's fine. Like he's he doesn't care. He's just like whatever. Whatever. Like I don't know what happened. My neck is a little sore, but uh, I'm just a regular old me. Was he like? Did he bounce right back? Like he. Okay, so we got him when we got we separated the dogs. We brought him back to our apartment because it was right out um, outside of our apartment, and he was looking at us like what? Like nothing had happened. Like, he, he's a white and black dog, mostly white, so, like, he had, like, blood in his fur and stuff. But I think it was mine and Gar's blood, <laughs> not his, because we got, I got a little bit and stuff by my own dog um, when he was trying to get the other, bite the other dog. Um, but he, like, he was, he was cool, like, almost immediately. I think he might have been freaked out because we were so freaked out. But yeah. So. He's like, it's like nothing ever happened right now. So you said it took, like, Half dozen people to get the dog separated. Yeah, so so Gar, the dog came out of nowhere and just attacked our dog, like in the hallway. So she was the first one there. She was hitting it like we have one of those retractable leashes, mm-hmm. and she, it's plastic and pretty oh. heavy. And she she was hitting it with that, hitting it in the head with that, trying to get the dog off. That didn't happen. I came outside because I was actually in the bathroom and heard it. Let and came outside. I started punching the dog in the face, tried to grab his jaws to pry him apart, which was stupid because that's not going to happen with a pit bull. Right. Um, the owner grabbed the dog's balls and was like squeezing him and pulling him, and that didn't work. This other guy grabbed a baseball bat and was hitting the dog like in the back and then the side. That didn't work. Jeez. Then um, this other guy like grabbed it by its like back hips and started yeah. pulling. And while he was doing that, I just put my hands around his throat and started choking it. Jeez. And then, fin- then finally it let go. It was... Man, what was it? You know, what what could it have been thinking? Was it defending? Like, was anybody around? I think it was just a crazy fucking dog. Oh, that's too bad. Terrible, with a terrible owner. Oh, that's too bad. But yeah. So And and the fact that it still had its balls made, made it super aggressive. Huh. So my, our dog didn't have stand a chance of defending itself. No, like, it was no. on it so quick. I hope he's. Uh, I hope there's no like long-lasting effects. I know. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think there will be. I hope not. But he like he doesn't even have. He didn't even need any stitches, so that was good. Um, he just looks. Your hand like, just looks fucked up. But yeah, my hand is uh, pretty cut up. Out a little bit. Yeah, that's just my thumb. The rest <laughs> of my hands are. Yeah. That's not, not great, fun. But it's it's uh it's getting better, and I think it's you know better to talk about it too instead of just kind of. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's yeah. been kind of all-consuming, too, so... For sure. sure. Uh, yeah, like, in the quiet moments, that's all you can think about is, like, the noise the dog was making or ah. how he, like, or the, the visual, you know, and it's just yeah. like, oh, it's so awful. And so, actually, like, playing video games this weekend <laughs> really helped me take my mind off of it. Yeah, I've had, um, been trying to... It, there's been a lot of stuff going on, like, positive and negative, around here, um... And using video games as a distraction has been—I hadn't—I hadn't done that for a while. Like, and I forgot that, like, I'm 
I like completely different games when I want to be distracted versus like I can't I can't get into the stuff that I was into like uh, yeah. like The Last of Us. Don't play that if you want to be distracted. That was kind no. of that's kind of what I learned. But Rogue Legacy really helps. Yes, yes, yes. Um, let's see. I'll try to bump this up. I went to a um, uh, uh, Megan's high school reunion this weekend. Um, so I've never been to somebody else's high school reunion. It's a lot more relaxing than, um, going, well, I skipped our high school reunion, but, uh, <laughs> but as far as going into any, any type of high school reunion events, like it's a lot less stressful when you're, you don't know anybody and you just have, I had a lot of fun because like three or four people, you know, like pretended like they knew who I was and I was like, no, I'm just random fiance here. So you have no <laughs> idea who I am. Yeah. Um, I love that people are trying to pretend that you went to that high school. That's so funny. <laughs> and um, we, I was hanging out with uh, one of Megan's friends that was taking pictures at the photo booth. And um, everybody thought we were just like this photography team. And neither one of us are professional ph- photographers by, by any means. So that was kind of funny. And then the alcohol got consumed. And the night turned into random huge men yelling my name that I had no idea who they were that were just like, you know, the old, the old best friends of Megan and then kind of like their, her big brother type types that they all had to meet me. And I'm just like, you know, my initial reaction anytime a large man like that yells, my name is, you know, it's, (laughs) it's, it's, it's not usually a positive one, but (laughs) it was just kind of happening left and right. So that was, uh, uh, that was kind of funny. It was, it was, it was a good time. Um, Franklin central, right? Yeah. Franklin central, the flashes, um, and then, um, then I checked out the new Netflix show. I don't know if you've been following this one. Like, so I've heard about it. What is this? Their fourth or fifth show? I think it's their fifth one. Cause they had, they had one show that I don't remember. Then they had house of cards. They had Hemlock Grove, house of cards, Arrested development. And I think there was one before house of cards because Hemlock Grove was right that. after house of cards. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, this one's uh, from the creators of Weeds or the writer of Weeds. Um, it's called um, Orange is the New Black. Apparently it's based on um, a true story, a book that this lady wrote, and she essentially gets thrown in prison, and that's how the show starts. Um, I thought and... you were going to say it's based on the true story of Horrible Night and how it got thrown in. <laughs> No. Since I didn't, we're orange I, and I also didn't, black. I didn't start watching this just because of the, the Halloween colors. <laughs> And um, so I didn't really, I ended up not liking weeds, so I didn't know what to make of this, but really like, and it's rare anymore for pilots of, you know, serial shows to immediately pull you in. Usually it takes a couple for you to like understand all the characters, where they're going, but this one was right away. It was, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, it's all about being in a, in a women's prison and she basically like 10 years prior, she helped her. Um, her girlfriend smuggled drugs and one time into like through customs or something and like 10 years down the road that ex-girlfriend tur- turned on her and turned her in and she had to go to prison for a year and a half after she's like you know been engaged in the starting a family and that kind of stuff so it deals with this relatively normal woman going to prison and um, who's the star of it? I, I don't really know her she's she hasn't been anything that I've recognize but jason biggs is the is the fiance so and nice. um lauren was it laura or lauren prepon the the really tall lauren girl prepon. from that 70s show she's the it. she's the former former girlfriend she's like the yeah, nice. drug queen so um and then cool. one of the, <laughs> the the russian lady that runs the 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 mess hall in the prison is the um the captain from star trek voyager <laughs> That was the only other actress I picked up, Captain Janeway or whatever her name is. Janeway, yeah. 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 So, uh, but some strong performances and I, yeah, one episode in and I, it it really stood out. So, um, give those I'll Netflix check it out. give those Netflix shows a shot. I mean, they they come in one season at a time, so why not? So, but let's move on to the video games chat. If you've got any uh, games of the week, uh, we're gonna start off with Cole's game of the week and get to yours. Yeah, so my game of the week, um, I haven't actually played a whole lot of it, but I spent some time downloading an HD mod for it, and that is Final Fantasy VII. 
Welcome to 2013, everybody. Yeah, welcome to 2013. Um, so I saw an article a couple weeks ago, maybe last week actually, on Kotaku or Joystick or something about there being um, HD mods for Final Fantasy VII, and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> and I saw the... Uh, it was released on Steam Uh-oh. recently, and it was $12, and then... Uh, good old Steam Summer Sale dropped that price down to like ten bucks. So oh, I didn't see that. I never saw it go on sale. Yeah, so I bought it when it was on sale. Um, so, and, not to yeah, jump in, but so Final Fantasy VII on the PC originally is the way I played the games. I never owned a PlayStation. Correct. And it was all kinds of jank, but it was a little bit um, had some like higher res visuals, but I had no idea that. Um, it even had mods, so now I kind of want to get the game because Ghost in Chat is talking off, uh, talking up the mods <laughs> as being epic. So I am incredibly curious now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've just seen side by sides of you know what it looked like before the mods and afterwards, and like it cleans up the text, the textures, everything. Like it looks unbelievable. I haven't got a chance to uh, mess with it yet because I just it just finished. Like the mods is like a seventeen point one gig download file, <laughs> and. Uh, Instead of downloading individual, I just downloaded you know, the whole thing. So yeah, like I'm, I'm really excited to get into that. Um, I actually did play Seven for a little bit yesterday just to see what it looks like old. Um, yeah. And like the polygons, like the the characters are super blocky, which I remember. Mm-hmm. But it's just really clean on my system. Like it's really smooth and clean. But the backgrounds, the pre-rendered backgrounds look terrible. <laughs> like, they're so cloudy and just uh, pixelated. And, like, I mean, you'd think they'd have those, like, they could re-render those. You know, those, yeah, you think they could. I don't know. That's, that's a really generalized statement to make. But, like, and they haven't, yeah. you know, it's not like Square Enix is, they're, wait, they're biding their time for this remake if they ever do it. And... Yeah, and, I don't, and like these people who made this, like they're basically saying you don't have to do it, you know. Yeah. Just we did all the work for you, and it's pretty extensive. And I, I don't even. I think they might have like re-rendered the backgrounds and stuff. I'm not exactly sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, some of the videos. So, do you think so. you'll actually? You're playing a handful of RPGs right now. Do you think you'll get into it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I usually <laughs> play. It, I usually play like. Until I get out of Midgar, like yeah. every every other year or so, which is really funny because I hate the Midgar part. <laughs> <laughs> like I just think it's terrible. Um, but it's such a good breakpoint once you get through it. Like, yeah, and once you get out of it, yeah. You, once you get out of it, you're just like, I don't want to play this anymore. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll probably, I'll definitely play it up until that point. I'm sure. Um, yeah, I don't I actually do want to. I do want to continue it just to see what else is just with these graphics. What else it'll look like? You know? Sure. I, I like I don't even I don't even know where this came from. Like it just all of a sudden showed up on that on the Steam shop. It's like mm-hmm. since I've been trying to keep track of new releases each week for our our shows again, um, Steam just always throws me curveballs like that. And it was like I had no idea Final Fantasy VII was coming out. So um, yeah, well I did a little I actually did a little digging um, right after I bought it, and and I guess Square Enix had re released it on the PC last year, and they they had a they gave themselves a year of uh, exclusivity mm-hmm. before releasing it on Steam. And oh, so they gotcha. Releasing on Steam, <laughs> they're just waiting for that to expire. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, while we're talking uh, current RPGs, uh, the <laughs> other big RPG release this month, um, actually last week, came out of nowhere. Even though I was trying, to, I was actually keeping an eye on it. But Earthbound is now out for the Wii U Virtual Console, and when I bought it. I realized that's the first time I've ever bought Earthbound. Because back when it was out, it was really hard to find because they didn't make very many copies. And also, I rented it like probably four different four different times. Like the it's the game that the first game I can remember turning in late to Blockbuster and dealing with all of that too. So um, I love that game, but never paid for it. And I think that might be part of the problem because <laughs> it. It never hit the audience that Nintendo needed it needed it to hit, but anyway, it's finally out and playable. So I will be streaming that pretty probably weekly um, until I hit a starting stopping point at least. Um, we'll see if I can get through the whole thing, but um, I think I can. So, 
but I've I've made that promise before too. Yeah, I actually downloaded it first time I turned my Wii U on um, in a while. Downloaded the update first, and then um, downloaded it in Donkey Kong because Donkey Kong was only thirty cents. Um, and I think it's the last of the thirty anniversary games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you have till next week or so. But yeah, like I was really excited. I never played Earthbound. I remember seeing it in the Kmart with the big box with the strategy guide. Like, mm-hmm. Kicking myself as I got older, saying, why did you ever buy this? Because it looked weird, oh, man. Weird. Like, why is no. this a giant box? And yeah. why does it look all sci-fi on the cover? And then you look back and it looks like you're just walking around town with a bunch of kids. Like, And, and honestly, like the, the graphic style works for that game, but it doesn't. It put me off at first. Yeah, it doesn't look that great. Like, if I'm playing Final Fantasy Mm III and then going to that, I'm just like, ugh. Yeah, it was, um, it's, all of its charm is in the details. And um, be curious. I I played it, I want to say three or four years ago, I emulated it and played it and, um, you know, still loved it as much as uh, I always have. But uh, we'll see, we'll see how this playthrough goes. I'm excited to sink my teeth into it. I think I'm going to, um, I, I, I didn't want to stream it without getting a, like a heavy block of time um, mm-hmm. dedicated to it, but I think I'll play it for two or three hours on t- after Tuesday night show. So, um, games of the week from chat. Uh, Verdian finally started The Walking Dead 400 Days. Uh, we talked a little bit about that on the Night Force podcast last week. Um, I still need to get into that too. Have you picked that up? No, I haven't. I'm still I'm still only like two. Uh, oh, okay. Two. <laughs> Two episodes deep in that. Maybe three. I don't know. Where's you the... Want to finish this. Where's the... Uh, I'm going to say uh, kind of a spoiler, but where's the cannibal episode? What episode is that? Is that two or three? The cannibal episode? Oh, oh yeah. That, that's two. Okay, so I've just finished two. Yeah, that, uh, yeah that's, when, <laughs> that's when that game gets kind of serious. So. Yeah. Um, then Aaron and Nilmar picked up Torchlight 2. Well, Nilmar picked up Torchlight 2 this week, and uh, he jumped in on Aaron's stream of that. Uh, lots of lots of looting going on this weekend. Um, Jordan's been playing the hell out of Psychonauts, it looks like. That that game, that's a meaty game. That takes a good 20, 30 hours to get through. So um, I'll be curious to see if he sees that, sees that all the way through because the game has a really, really strong like first half kind of tails off and gets a little bit the, the platforming gets a little tiresome by the end but it's still an amazing amazing game um and then uh mangler uh, you might know him cole <laughs> your cu- your cousin is in chat this cousin? evening uh Let's he's he's um and he's been playing poker night too um poker night <laughs> the inventory too um if you like those characters um and like poker uh definitely i like the first one a lot so um, i have the first one i haven't played it yet it's I, I like it. It kind of taught me poker. I never actually learned it, so I was I was having fun with it in that regard. And you know, I've heard it's not the best poker game out there, but whatever. Um, it's it's silly and kind of you know five seven bucks or whatever it is. So, um, as far as horriblenight.com ho- highlights, what had your attention last week? Uh, the bro tabulous, as usual, always has my attention. Came out of uh, fucking nowhere. Yeah. So, I think I think Ethan told this story on a previous podcast about how he um, defeated the last like rogue ship or something like that yeah. from FTL, and he made a Brotabulous video. Now, if you haven't seen a Brotabulous video, um, you should go back and watch the Saints Row one and the XCOM one, and now the FTL one. Mm-hmm. They're all good. Let, let's be honest. Um, but basically, it's just about going to battle with your bros and uh <laughs> man like Ethan, like i was actually watching it at work and ethan's celebration <laughs> he's, so he, he's, he's so happy he's so happy like he's not yelling or anything but his arms just go straight up and he's like yeah yeah and just like oh it was so great it's like the highlight of his year man yeah yeah it's a pretty it was a pretty good comeback story for him so yeah he uh you know he'll play any game that brings people together, whether they're NPCs or real people, and that's that's what Bertabulous is all about. And um, you know, he got through that entire game with his his full crew. So, for Dean and I, well, we're on the crew, and we didn't let him down apparently. So, <laughs> um, I want to give a shout out to Ethan's Cheap and Dirty Gamer last week. 
he discovered a a point and click adventure game on I think he found it on Newgrounds, but there's also a, I think a Kickstarter behind it, and you can get all the episodes for it. But it's called The Last Door, and he just said it's it's just one of the most nerve wracking, apprehensive experiences he's had in a long time. And for that to be a from a little adventure game, um, he was pretty blown away. And um, the di- the you can get the first episode for free, and then I believe there are five episodes uh, forthcoming. Um, but just really high praises. Usually, usually his cheap and dirty games um, are, um, you know, you can kind of take or, take him or leave him. But this one kind of elevated itself above. Like, I want he's going to review the series um, um, once he finishes all the all of them. So um, expect to see some more from the last door. Um, I recommend checking that out. Cool. On to the worst of the week in gaming. Uh, just something that's been going on in the industry that has bugged you recently. Um, chat, throw out your answers. Cole, what do you got? So I'm not like a huge uh, sports game guy anymore. I used to play Madden pretty regularly and, and sometimes in NCAA football. Um, but lately the, uh, the NCAA has dropped... Um, dropped out of. They're no longer like sponsoring, I guess, the uh, the EA game mm-hmm. or having having their name attached to the EA game. And I just think like I'm not mad at that. Like I think it's kind of shady on their part because they're trying to get away from a lawsuit mm-hmm. that some old players have filed against EA and included the NCAA in it um, in terms of using their likeness and made, making money off their likeness without giving them any credit or anything or money. Which is a little shitty. But what I'm kind of upset about is like the sites that re- that are reporting that <laughs> like, that that it's like a big deal that the NCAA is dropping their name off of it. It's been because old news, right? Yeah, it's been old news, and it doesn't matter because <laughs> there is a college football licensing agreement that all the universities belong to, and so you're going to get all your colleges still in that game. It's not you're just not going to have the NCAA logo basically, um, and they were all the way they're making it sound is like it's a huge deal and it's really it's stupid. Yeah, it, and like I said, the you know this decision was was a while ago. It was kind of like one of those what they're they're punishing them for the you know not like using likenesses, misusing likenesses, and then just kind of the mono- monopoly side of it. That was more of what they were going after. And right. so now more companies can make college football games and NCAA is just not, they're not pairing up with, with EA at, at, on this one. I don't, and I don't think they're pairing up with anybody. Um, I don't think they are either. I think they're tr- just trying to back up. And, and again, it's just an organization body. It's not like each college themselves has the own rights to negotiate whether or not they're going to be in the game Yeah. with the, I forget what the other, I think it's CFL college football licensing thing, but it's I don't know. It's, oh, it's not going to change the game at all. Is what when you say. when you called this out, I was actually kind of laughing because, um, you know, the difference between between some of some of these sites they don't cover sports games, but they were trying to cover the story, and they were they were making it out to be a bigger deal because they didn't even fully understand it uh, right. because they don't follow it that closely. And um, but yeah, it was it was really confusing there for a couple days because people were like updating it and revising it and not I never really fully understood what the story was when I remember the the um, the decision coming down that that EA was going to have to give that up so that really yeah. that, that that wasn't news so when this became news again it was kind of confusing it was um, my have word to argue about yours yeah <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> My worst of the week uh, was Capcom finally revealed their Strider game. It um, this has been long rumored uh, as another franchise that Capcom was bringing back, um, and they were going to try to bring it back in a big way. And they, I think, they revealed the game play trailer. Was it associated with Comic Con, or is it just? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it just came out. Okay. At the same time, I, I could be. I, I really don't know. So they had like you know a few minutes of gameplay, and uh, the game kind of looks like sh- uh, Shadow Complex or the 2D Bionic Commando or uh, the 2D Russian Attack remake. Um, so you know polygonal graphics, but 2D planes, and you know lots of Strider Cyber Ninja action, and it looked really really boring to me. And I expected something more. It seemed like a really safe bet developed by 
um, a not so good developer. So why am I wrong? Uh, who's a developer? Double Helix. Double Helix. Yeah, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I just I remember getting. I thought it looked good. I thought okay, it looked here, exciting. We love Shadow Complex. Yeah. Okay. We I love the first Bionic Commando rearmed. Mm-hmm. I got hype for Rearm 2. It kind of fell on its face. And then around that time, Russian Attack was going to be the next kind of game of, of that ilk. And that one kind of fell on its face. And I just saw nothing in Strider to get me excited. It just looked... I mean, it looked... I mean, it, it was fat. It was fast and kind and fast and stylish, but didn't look like it had any impact. It just looked, looked boring to me. So, I think... I. I don't think it looked boring to me. Okay. Um, but I'm kind of bummed out that Double Helix is doing it. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they learn their lesson on the boring games that they made. Um, yeah. But I, I think I think part of it is also with with a game like this, um, just having the name Strider, it just brings back a lot of good memories for me. Even though, like I said in our little email chain, that I'm probably the only person that enjoyed it on the Nintendo, the NES. Um, it was brutal. I, I rented it a couple times, and I really liked it. So I don't know if that's playing a part. It probably is. I mean, I'm a little bit. I'll fully admit I'm just judging it based on the reveal trailer and and also just because I th- they everybody expected Capcom to announce this like two years ago and yeah. so I expected something more than just you know your downloadable 2D platformer. Like I just sure. I, I mean we had I had an argument with Gifford on the site about you know I said I expected them to go like 3D or something else with it and he. He's probably right, and that that probably wouldn't work either. But mm-hmm. something more than this just looked like a really safe and boring play, and it's just kind of like, why are you wasting Strider on this reveal? Like, what? This isn't as big a deal as you were making it out to be. So, I was disappointed, but um, we'll see when we get our hands on it too. Uh, worst of the week from chat. Verdian <laughs> found out that apparently the original ending for Saints Row Four. Was supposed to be a Bollywood dance number, which would have been awesome. Uh, but apparently, it to motion capture the entire dance number uh, was going to cost too much money, so they've had to uh, kind of change the plans up a little bit. So, oh man, every I I I've been I was kind of down on Saints Row for I think around E three, just like when all they were showing was the superhero stuff, but like. When you see like how much stuff is actually taking place in space and like all of this kind of um you know, I know it all exists kind of like in a computer generated world too, like kind of holodeck shit. Like they could do anything with this game and I've been getting getting kinda of amped for it, so of course there might be you know, a Bollywood dance number. Yeah, I've can like I usually don't do this for games, but I have not looked at a single trailer for this game. <laughs> I, I kind of just want to be totally surprised. <laughs> it's I keep catching little ads for it, and then uh, I did see the first ad today, like loading the Twitch stream, and I was like, "Wait, is this this is a troll?" And it wasn't like super exciting, but um, I'm, I'm, that's okay. Like, I don't need to see all the cool shit that that game's gonna have in it before it's released. We were we were talking about maybe playing Saints Row Three after the show, but now I'm kind of thinking about it. I don't really want to. I kind of want to hold off. <laughs> I kind of want to like just get my heavy dose of Saints Row when that game comes out. So, well, I, I did download it, so it is done. Down. Okay, so we, it is an option. Um, Aaron, uh, worst of the week. Um, keep this in mind when we get the best of the week. Was uh, the, the Steam sale is over? Um, how much damage did the Steam sale do for you? Uh, I mean. Let's see. I it, had. You spend more or less money than than the holiday sale. Oh, definitely more because I didn't. Get, I wasn't on the holiday okay. sale okay. by that point. Um, I spent maybe under under one hundred and fifty. Okay. I'm not doing the math yet, so. <laughs> I'm just guessing. It could be more. All you uh, need to know about me is I got the f- fourth fourth or fifth level. I lost track of. The Steam sale badge. So, I was. How do you how do you check that? Let me see. I was playing. Um, I was playing the marketplace. Um, did not spend any actual dollars getting cards, but I did trade a bunch of my duplicates and 
Um, even some emoticons. I was selling emoticons for two cents, man. Making making oh money. God. <laughs> God. Jordan's worst of the week is that JPT has introduced him to Timber and Stone, and I think he's afraid that he's going to get sucked into that game. Um, Nilmar has been buying some PC games and is getting frustrated with his computer, so we might have to uh, see about getting that dude some some fundraising for, for a new computer so he can uh, play some of his new games. Steam sells pretty mean like that, but it really makes you makes you take a hard look at your computer hardware. Um, best of the week in gaming. Uh, chat, you still got time to throw out some answers here. Um, I'll start us off because I got really excited today when I read that not only is Sp- Spelunky getting ready to come out um, August 8th for PC, uh, but they're going to kick off daily challenges uh, once that game releases, which just mean that they're going to be randomly generated and... You can choose to choose to enter the challenge, and you get one attempt. If you That's as soon as you cool. as soon as you die, your name goes up on the leaderboard, and you see where you rank in the daily challenges, and those refresh every day. Talk about some bragging rights! I think there's <laughs> going to be a lot of screenshots floating around on the internet of people spelunky. If people finish a level, <laughs> there's going to be some screenshot bragging rights. I just want. I think it's, I think it's a great idea. It's. Brilliant. Brilliant for roguelikes. If you're going to have anything, yeah. like a roguelike with randomly generated daily challenges and leaderboards, that's fantastic. And I, I really hope to bring Josh Lee out of retirement so I can force him to play the game again. But <laughs> that's my favorite thing about Spelunky, but I don't know if that'll happen. Yeah, that's pretty good. What's yeah, your best? Check that video. What's your best of the week? Well, I, I have some issues with it. Uh, but I'll get to those in a second. My best of the week is Contra on the iOS. Um, they've re-released Contra. I think it's called Contra Evolved. And they updated... It's basically the first game. Uh, they updated the graphics, and, um, you know, they've added some, like, point collecting and stuff like that uh, mm-hmm. within the game, which is okay. That, that all, The point collecting is good. The, the updated graphics are awesome. Okay. The control fucking sucks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's on on screen uh, joystick with uh, a jump yeah. button. You're yeah. you're always you're always no. firing, constantly firing. No. Which is fine. Why um, is this? Why is this best? This this all sounds because, like bad. Because news. because because if enough people are fooled into buying it, like me, <laughs> they might make this for a, a, a thing you can play on your handheld. Maybe? Okay, or on your PC um, with a controller. Um, I think they're kind of just gauging interest, honestly, with this, like to see see who likes Contra still. Well, let me try uh, to counter your best of the week then, because it's really not a best of the week. No, um, because whatever. Because with that handheld you enjoy so much, Metal Metal Slug Double X is gonna be free on PlayStation Plus here this week. So oh, sweet. So get your contra fix through Metal Slug. Yeah. Um, now like the music is updated. You can be, you could. They even like let you select characters. You could be the dudes that I, I'm drawing a blank right now. Mad Dog and Scorpion. <laughs> like you could be the dudes. They're they're they're. Yes, contra exists. On, but there's so many other versions. And they're they're getting all those retro. They're they're plugging all those retro holes. <laughs> But they done fucked up the controls. Yeah, don't even try that with the touch screen. So No, it's awful. So, maybe on the hack, maybe on the hack your, we could hack your Wii controller onto your iPad and play it with that. There <laughs> better option. But I don't even know about the, the auto fire. Yeah, it just It's weird. Did you play messy. it? No, I just because yeah. yeah. I, I see Contra on iOS and I say worst of the week. But yeah. um but more Contra is always a good thing. And now I want to go play I want to go grab Contra 4 for the DS because I never picked that up. And uh, that's supposed to be awesome. So, uh, best of the week. Super C on your 3DS. You can. Super C. Yeah, yep. That's pretty good. Best of the week from chat. Uh, Verdian. Um, apparently behind the Jew- German consumer rights group that is now fighting Valve over the right to, to resell used digital games. So, we've had a lot of. A digital rights discussion, uh, thanks to the Xbox One, 
but uh, Germany's kind of lucked out in front that they're going to move this forward to trial. It'll be really interesting to see how this shakes out, especially just kind of because all 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 things have been pointing to Valve actually working on this on their own. So um, I blame Ethan for this. <laughs> he probably is behind it. He didn't hear about this trial until he moved over to Germany. So. That's right. Um, Aaron's best of the week in gaming is that the Steam sale is over. So <laughs> that's my that's part of my best and worst. Yeah, that's how he that's how he wrote it down. And then Jordan um, was upset uh, by this the discovery of Timber and Stone, but enjoys the fact that J, he's now subscribed to JPT's YouTube channel where he's playing through the game, so Jordan doesn't have to. So yeah, the JPT is the newest member of our par- podcast crew. Uh, you can ca- catch Jason uh, on the Night Force Action Report podcast uh, every other Tuesday. He'll be on the show. So, uh, but yeah, in the meantime, check out his Let's Play videos on his YouTube cha- channel and uh, Mangler, who's hanging out in chat. Uh, Andy and him do a Evolution of Gaming podcast twice a week. So, lots of YouTube goodness there. And then Nilmar was excited about the Steam sale as well, since he got three games for under twelve pounds, and he. I didn't know digital games weighed anything. <laughs> oh, we're all just really bitter about that royal baby, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, I know two of those were Torchlight and Borderlands Two. You can't can't argue with that. That's pretty good. Yeah. We'll get out of here with our question of the week. Chat, interested in your reaction to this this as well, because. I've been struggling with this. Uh, Mercenary Kings just got released on Steam for early access. And this is becoming more and more of a thing. We've been playing uh, Cube World, which is an alpha right now. And we all know that Minecraft kind of started all this madness of playing a game before it's even done. Um, I've been trying to figure out like how we want to actually cover alpha games or early access games. And um, kind of wanted your, re- your gut reaction, Cole, like... What do you want to see? What types of coverage do you want to see of an alpha game? Do you want opinions? When do we draw the line? When do we say the game's done? Because some of these games just seem to be infinitely in beta. But what's your yeah, initial? Yeah, I kind of, I kind of hate the Minecraft model. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that people have kind of adopted. Um, I think it's great that your game is done enough where people can play it, um, and I think. I don't know, like, part of me wants to say you shouldn't release it, you know, at all. Mm -hmm. But then that other part says, you know, if it's playable, people should play it. Uh, But, man, I'm I'm kind of stuck because, especially with Cube World, like, I think that looks awesome. And it seems like you guys had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And, I I mean, it's definitely more of a game than Minecraft is. But there's a... there's parts missing, you know, like there's no music unless you have harmonica in chat. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I think the way we're doing it in terms of our coverage is, I think, I think it's better to just keep playing, keep streaming. Yeah. Um, I think, I think writing about it is a little wonky cause it's not, you know, the writing is definitely there forever. And yeah, you can preface it by saying this is an early build, but, are we going to go back and fix that? After, are we going to write again about it? Probably yeah. not. Um, but will we stream it again? Yeah, you know, like I think I, I think where we're at is good. Just I think keep streaming it until maybe it becomes a full game, and then that's where we would do some write something down. Yeah, I, I I've just been kind of going with my instincts on Cube World, just because it's you know it had a little bit of a zeitgeist around it when. The servers were crashing, and everybody wanted to, wanted to play it and buy it, but couldn't. And I wanted to check it out. I think it's a gorgeous looking game, but you know, I can't pass any harsh criticism on it because of how early it is. But if it gets in that kind of infinite beta phase, you know, I'll you know throw out more hardcore opinions. But for now, like, just you know, I think as long as we preface that these are alpha games or early access games, uh, we'll go ahead and stream it, and you know, you can react along with us but also know that the next time we play it it might be completely different but i don't know there's a couple like that mercenary kings games out there and then american mcgee had that he has that 
Akaniro Demon Hunters game that I've been waiting to play, but I want it done. I don't. I want to. Right. I want to judge it. I don't want to like come back to it to see if they fix it. And well, I think like Andy and Mangler and Chad made a good point saying you know level progression and is painfully slow. Towns are a nightmare to find anything. Talking about Cube World, and it's like that kind of stuff will give you a bad impression of a game and make you not want to play it anymore. I think if you're if you're having those struggles. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's that's kind of where I'm coming in. Like, I don't want to play a game that's not done and, and get a bad vibe from it, whereas, you know, maybe later on it could be a really good game. Yeah, I mean, that's what Andy's kind of saying in, in chat. I think a lot, of the, a lot of guys that do the Let's Play videos on YouTube, you know, they just... If it becomes a popular stream for people to watch, that's one thing, but if it's not fun to play, that's another struggle entirely like there's enough just like exploration to cube world that it keeps keeps that up but if the game's broken i don't want to i don't want to play it i mean the other week i was playing um mega man unlimited and you know its gamepad support was a little bit wonky and really really frustrating for me to play um and i was kind of harsh against the game but then you you know then i found a way around that and you know, when you find your way around glitches, you have a different opinion, and it's just, it's weird because these games are always evolving. Like, where do you draw that line? Or is it even important to draw that line anymore? I think the way that people consume game reviews and game coverage these days, like, they just, you know, they find the people they connect with, kind of watch the game, form their own opinions, get the opinions of the people they trust, and go from there, rather than just reading a straight-up review, so... Those, I don't know, it seems like more and more of those days are um, going by the wayside, no matter how this alpha stuff turns out. Let's see, anything else? <laughs> Jordan's solution is to only play games that are four years old, four years or older. I mean, so, I'm into that. <laughs> let him, like, fine wine. Yeah, <laughs> explains why he's playing Psychonauts, but that's, that's one way to do it, too. Cool. I think that's going to do it for... Top video game po- podcast of the week. Cole, thanks for hanging out. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. Chat, thanks for uh, your contributions. We'll be back again next week and with more questions for you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.